A Foot in the Door with Disability Placement Schemes with Steph Cutler, Ellen Williams and Kevin Satsabal. What we're going to do today is talk about work placement schemes. And by that, what we mean, or certainly what I mean, is really anything that provides a work opportunity ideally paid, you know, let's get some, let's get some cash in the bank. Um, a paid placement that um, provides you with some, some work experience. Um, and there are plenty of these and they can be called different things like work placement schemes, internships, um, apprenticeships, all sorts of things. They might be called different things, but that, that's the broad umbrella term that we're using today to talk about opportunities to gain experience. And what we're going to do is provide afterwards um, like a handout from the session that will have at least some places that are running these so that you can look into them for yourselves. You can find a guide on work placements at www.visionfoundation.org.uk forward slash news forward slash see my skills how to land your dream job forward slash getting your foot in the door with disability work placements, forward slash. Who am I? My name's Steph. My name's Steph Cutler, and I'm really, really delighted to be here today. Um, I'm joined um, currently by, uh, by Kevin and by Ellen, who will introduce themselves in just a moment. We've also got an, an Abby and a Kirsty, who's, who's hopefully going to join us a little bit later on. Um, um, we all have you some are- experience of these schemes um, and so we wanted to share some thoughts and we wanted to be really honest um, and really yeah what's and all so you can ask us anything and we're going to share anything and I think you know I'm going to start just by introducing myself quite briefly um, so when I was your age I was sighted and I was really keen to get into work and I was keen to get into a really competitive area of work so I wanted to be a fashion designer And so I actually created my own sort of work placement, if you like, um, an unpaid summer placement working for a designer in order to get the experience to get into work when I got the opportunity to get paid work. And that was because work was really competitive um, and I needed to have some experience. I needed to have something to talk credibly about. I needed something on my CV and I wanted just to experience what it might be like to get the job that was in my mind at that time. Um, I then, um, I lost my sight or much of my sight in my late 20s um, and actually on looking for work as a blind or partially sighted person, well, as a partially sighted person, I found it, found it more difficult and it's easy to say I found it difficult because suddenly I was blind Um, and actually I don't think that was it for the majority of it, but certainly it played a part Um, and in order to get back into work, I wasn't going back into fashion, I was going to look for a different type of job. I applied for a work placement that was at the time run by RNIB for which I was going to relocate. Um, So big commitment. Um, And then I finally got a job just at that time. So I didn't do it in the end, but I was certainly very prepared to do that. Um, Since then, I actually set up my own business. So one option is to employ yourself. Um, And I also have been head of employment at Thomas Cockington Trust and worked um, to get their internship programme um, um, improved and able to be an external program. So that's, that's a little bit about a little bit about me. Um, I have some thoughts on this, but so have my fabulous panelists. So I'm going to ask um, Ellen and Kevin just to very briefly just introduce themselves, say hello, and then then we'll crack on and we're going to have a conversation with them. So um, Ellen, hi. Hi, yeah, Steph, um, and everyone else as well. My name is Ellen. I am visually impaired. I was born with a um, with a degenerative eye condition, so I've been VI from birth. Um, and I work for Look UK, the, one of the charities running this event today. Um, and I work as a volunteer manager. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. What about you? Could you say a few words? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin. Um, I'm a uh, production trainee at the BBC. I'm only two months in. I can't believe I'm saying those words um, because it's been a dream of mine for a long time and I'll talk about this more but fourth time lucky. So keep <laughs> that's my first tip is to keep applying but I'll talk about that more in depth and uh, my background is I'm also a musician. Beforehand I worked at Thomas Popkinton Trust like Steph did as well 
um, and, I, I, and I worked for Look as well uh, in marketing. So really happy to, to be here. So first of all, then, um, I we have a panelist who's been on a work placement scheme, who's, who's, who's been there, done that. And we've got, uh, that's Ellen. And we've got Kevin, who is currently in one. So really amazing opportunities to talk to, to them about it. And I'm going to start by asking, could you just say a little bit about the scheme? So Ellen, the Change 100, could you just say a little bit about what it is? Yeah, sure. So um, the Change 100 uh, programme is a, um, it's run by a charity called Leonard Cheshire Disability. Um, and it's a, it's a work placement scheme for disabled students and graduates. So um, it's for anyone who, with any sort of disability um, in their final year of uni or um, having just graduated. Um, and what it is, is a, it's a programme that um, provides a paid work placement for up to three months. Um, but also includes professional development opportunities and mentoring as well. Um, so it's a really, really good kind of step into employment. Thank you, uh, Ella. And Kevin, a little about, about the scheme that you're on or the scheme the BBC runs? Yeah, so the scheme I'm on um, is the BBC Production Trainee Scheme. They say it's the gold standard in training for the industry to get into production. Um, and I'll basically, I'm working for the next 18 months uh, on different placements at the BBC, specialising in radio and, and music, um, uh, but you can also get training in TV and also online um, kind of digital uh, training, but you get basically trained in production, how to make programmes, how to research them and how to get uh, them ready for broadcast. And so I think the first thing for me hearing that to highlight is that there are different schemes out there. So for some, you have to be um, at uni or have graduated. Um, uh, the one Kevin's on you, is for non-disabled people as well as disabled people. There are others with other stipulations. So it needs a little bit of looking into as to which one's for you. So, um, but all of them potentially serve the same purpose. So what was the appeal? Kevin, what was the appeal to you for going for this traineeship? Well, for the BBC, it's it's a <laughs> global brand. It's a global brand. We we all know what the BBC does. It's right there at the forefront of global events. Um, you know, very, very kind of trusted news site. Um, Ninety percent of the UK population tune into the BBC every week. Um, so that's a huge, huge reach and, and they keep expanding it. So I was just very, very excited to be trained by an organisation that I was, you know, tuned into as a kid. I used to listen to Radio 4 as a kid, watch BBC, you know, sports and all this stuff. And I was just very excited because I've loved radio and I've loved uh, the media to be in an organisation that could give me that training. So for you, there was something about the name. Um, it looked good on your CV. It appealed to you. There's lots of shared connections and interests in, in respect of that. That sounds fantastic. So yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah yeah like what's not to like um, um what, about, what about what about you ellen um what was the appeal of putting yourself forward for change 100 because I, I have spoken to the people behind change 100 in the past and i know it's really really competitive um so firstly congratulations for getting on it when you did but what was the appeal um yeah i think for me it was um so i was when I, at the time of applying for Change 100, I was, uh, I just finished uni, I'd just come out of, I uh, just graduated, um, and I was really kind of applying for anything and everything, um, so I was really just looking for any sort of opportunity, any sort of way in, um, and, and this came, I, I found Change 100, and it just seemed really a, a good opportunity as like a, a, to get your foot in the door, but also, and because there's mentoring and professional development involved as well it just it seemed like a way to get into work that had a lot of extra sort of perks um so that that's what really appealed to it, it appealed appealed me to it and um, to be honest was just like a like a, a way in <laughs> yeah no absolutely I'm, I'm glad you used a step in the door because I think that's our title of our workshop so absolutely brilliant what was the application process like um, so for Change 100, um, they, it's kind of, it's very similar to, to a mainstream grad scheme. So um, there was an application um, that you have to get in before January. 
And then um, if you get through the application stage, then they invite you to an assessment center. So an assessment center is um, where you might go and have to, uh, you have to kind of complete like group tasks and then and you're, you're assessed on um, how you, how you complete the group tasks, but also how you interact with people um, to kind of demonstrate team working and things like that. Um, and then there's also an interview element. So um, it was, it was quite involved and it was quite nerve wracking because it's the first time I was doing something like that. Um, and then, so after you go through the assessment center, if you're then successful and, and shortlisted again, then after at that point, um, then you're, um, interviewed again for um, things like your your preferences for what sort of area of, of work you'd like to go into or, or what sort of area in the country you'd like to go to as well because it's a it's a UK wide scheme. Um, so you you get to state your preferences, but it is it is a bit of a lottery, and, and then they'll match you with an employer that will kind of um, you know that, that that happy to take you on. So you get to state your preferences, but there's no sort of guarantee. So. So yeah, it was, it was it was a quite a long process as well from from doing the application and then going through the assessment centre and the interview and then finally being matched with an employer in sort of May June time. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of kind of nail biting. <laughs> it's no walk in the park, is it? <laughs> no, no, and and kind of trying to you know, there's no guarantee, so I was still applying for lots of different things at the same time as well. Yeah, yeah, but an amazing opportunity and 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 one in which is a springboard or potentially a real springboard into um into other things so we'll, we'll we'll come to that but i'm i'm keen to ask the same thing to kevin so um the application process would you talk us a little bit about that kevin please yeah absolutely so a lot of kind of parallels with ellen's experience okay. um, very long process um i submitted my first online application April last year and that's kind of like where they kind of get in a sense of, of you why do you want to apply like who are you what stories do you want to tell stories is very very big in the BBC they really want your ideas and they want your personality to come through um like you know you don't know whether you'll get this question but to give you an example one of the questions was like what's your superpower so they really want you to think outside the box for those kind of questions um and, and then after that, uh, there was another online um, session that I had to do, which was like a video uh, and again, answering more questions. And this was more kind of like, you know, how much are you listening to the BBC? What kind of content do you listen to? And then the third round was uh, an assessment center as well. And th this was again, like Ellen said about, you know, they were assessing how you interact with other people. And we had to kind of pitch an idea and, and, and put forward uh, a, a program idea to the team and then all of us pitched ideas and then we all had to kind of come up with the one we liked and pitch it to the team and we had something like like 10 minutes to do that so the conversation was very very quick you know if you're not someone who talks a lot that's absolutely fine you can make check in that somebody else is talking that they're getting their ideas and listen to what other people are saying you know summarize and then put forward something but just always put forward something make sure you're you're speaking you don't have to speak a lot but if you're the kind of person that says something and it and it steers the conversation then that's absolutely fantastic and then we had an interview uh, which again was all about um you know getting your sense of have you, have you got you know your passion what are you listening to that was a big big thing give me give us examples of what you listen to why you liked it why you didn't like it um so that they really get a sense that you know you really want to make content and programs great stuff that's really interesting thank you thanks kevin for sharing that um so i'm, I'm also keen to know because we've we've all got our impairment um kevin yours isn't an impairment specific scheme um and in yours was um, so whether it is or isn't we're living with our impairment and how did that play out does it does it put you off did it put you off did you think about do I really want to go on a scheme for disabled people or did that appeal to you more so um, how did, how was it going for a mainstream um, scheme Kevin with your impairment I'm just like briefly but some things around how that impacted your decision making and how you presented yourself so for me uh there were lots of uh already role models or a few actually that i was kind of looking up to that already worked at the bbc and that was that was really special so people like gary o'donoghue who's the washington correspondent uh someone like uh, Lee, 
um, Damon Rose, who used to work at BBC Ouch. Great um, visually, Peter White, of course, who's talking today, um, who 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 um, presents in touch. So real, real great role models that I go, well, if they can do it, why can't I do it? Um, and, and I also heard that the BBC are very uh, positive about disability. They really want to increase uh, the amount of people that that kind of work for the disability. And I thought, well, this is great. You know, there's people that are already doing it. They seem to be really positive. And that really gave me uh, a boost. Um, but I think, yeah, having those role models and saying, actually, you know, I want to follow my dreams. That was my key thing, even if they hadn't been that positive. And I've, I have applied to other jobs where I haven't really known how positive they've been about disability, but it didn't matter. I've just kept going for the jobs that I've wanted to do um, because um, it's just really important to follow your passion. You're going to be there eight hours a day, five days a week for a, a long time in your life. So you really, really want to be in a position um, where you're happy. And so, yeah. Yeah, you want the right organisation. You want to be a good fit for the role and the organisation, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. And I would say everybody does. But I would also say if you have an impairment, perhaps there's a greater focus on that because, because it's going to matter perhaps a bit more. I don't know. Come back if you don't agree. But uh, it's, it's important. I think that also, you know, finding an organisation that fits and understands your needs is very important. Absolutely. Um, but you've got to try it first, haven't you, to find out. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, how about you, Ellen? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, um, an interesting way that I, I sort of thought about it was that, that, so at the time that I was applying, I think I've mentioned already, but I was applying for literally anything and everything because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I didn't have, I came out, I kind of got spat out of uni and then was like, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I, where, where I want to go. You know, I, so um, so I was just sort of looking looking around for, the, for just anything really, because um, I knew I wanted to, to to get work, but I just didn't know what to do. Um, so I was applying for anything and everything. Um, and a, quite a sort of positive thing about the Change One Hundred um, scheme for me was that you know, the, that kind of opportunity wouldn't be available if I didn't have a disability. Um, so that was that, that was kind of what I, the way I looked at it, because there are so many different work placement schemes um, for people in, you know, with different criteria for people from different backgrounds and people wanting to go into a specific field like Kevin's, um, you know, the, the scheme that Kevin's on for, for wanting to go, to go into media. If you're, if you want to do um, something specific like that. There are a lot of schemes with with criteria, and with this one, it just happened to be that the criteria was you need to be um, someone with a disability and a, and a recent student and graduate. And I and I met that criteria, so it was just kind of like a tick box. I'm like, right, cool, this fits. I'm going to just go for it and see what happens. And it was really helpful because I was at that point where I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, it really fit for me at the time because because of the the, the way that the scheme works that. There are a lot of different employers, lots of different opportunities you can go to. And like I say, you can set a preference for what you'd like to do, but there's no guarantee. So you might end up, as I did, doing something that you would never have sort of thought about before. So I ended up working in a um, as part of a conference and events team for, for a big membership organization, helping them to organize a conference. Um, and it's never something I would have kind of imagined doing. So it was, it was actually really fun. Um, in the end, it was a bit nerve wracking at the time, but <laughs> but really interesting in the end to just you know just yeah. go for it and just give it a go and see what happens. It's an opportunity to give something a go. It's yeah. for six months or eight months or six weeks or something, but it's going to come to an end. And so there, so why not just yeah. give it a go and see what comes mm -hmm. of it? Because you know anybody doesn't know what a job entails until you've had a go at it. I mean that's really what Kevin was just saying. So it does give a really because anybody who does one of these schemes a chance to try something without too much commitment for it to be for the rest of your life exactly yeah 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 definitely agreed yeah i'm wondering do we have any questions at this point we've heard we've heard a bit i've got a few more questions but i would <laughs> like to hear if anybody else has got a few more questions we so. have had stuff yes um, yeah so anderson's asked for kevin how did you get on the bbc scheme and did you need qualifications so for my one i didn't need uh uh, qualifications. Um, I just needed to show that I'd done some 
something in the media um, and had some experience. So because I'd, I'd worked in marketing, I'd done some podcasting that helped me. There's people who are on the scheme who've just come out of uni and they've done a little bit of student radio or hospital radio. But they basically really want to know that you're passionate about um, you know, telling stories. There are other schemes though. Um, there's you know, apprenticeship schemes, for example, where you can get kind of A-level uh, type uh, qualifications. Um, you can actually get degrees and NVQs, like level four to seven NVQs. And um, those schemes, the benefit is that you, you earn while you learn, you know, you are actually getting a qualification in the media and they do have uh, employment at the end uh, for most. So my scheme, I'm, I'm there for 18 months and then uh, they're kind of ready me for the freelance world. And then off I go trying to get either a contract with the BBC or with another broadcaster. Um, so yeah, it varies on, on the kind of scheme that they want to do. And just very quickly, it's not just in production at the BBC, it's a huge organization. You know, if you're into tech and you want to be in software, you know, the, the software and engineering team, um, you can be doing design and engineering team, you know, you can be in software design, you could be a data analyst, you know, if you're in the business team, you want to be an administrator, there's lots of roles, you want to work in HR. There's so, so many roles at the BBC. So it's not just about making the content. It's also about supporting the making of the content. Thank you for that, Kevin. Any other questions? Uh, yes, a question from Haydar. Did any of you have to apply to Access to Work? Good I, question. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm going through that process at the moment. Uh, even though I started as soon as I heard that I was doing the, the job. So it, it can take a little bit of a uh, long time, but I have applied because I need some equipment, like a braille display so I can read scripts and so on, and also a support worker because there are some systems that are not very accessible, sadly. Um, if they're being worked on, but they're not quite so, yeah, and things like that. And if also if I'm going out and about a location, um, I'm going to need a sighted guide. So yeah, definitely applying for access to work. Yeah, uh, and you, Ellen? Yeah, um, so my situation was a bit different because the um, the placement that I did was only 12 weeks long. So it's not very long and 12 weeks is uh, at the moment the time that you're expecting to, to hear back from an access work, um, uh, assessor before you, you know, start the process. So I did start the process um, as soon as I knew that I was going to do the placement, but there was a very quick turnaround. I think I found out what uh, my placement was uh, I think mid-May and then I needed to start at the start of July um, so it was a quite a quick turnaround um, so I applied and we sort of got so far but the system was so um, was kind of just the, the timelines didn't really match up and I was quite lucky again another perk of Change 100 um, that because uh, the organizers of Change 100 are very supportive with this as well um, I was lucky Lucky that the organisers of Change 100 um, helped me to then advocate with my employer, and my employer was, you know, a really big employer. I was at the Royal College of Radiologists, um, so they were willing and happy to to source the, the assistive tech I needed. I just needed jaws mainly um, for, for me, and then I did. But I, I didn't manage to kind of figure out everything to get sort of transport support and and uh, support worker and things like that in time just because it was such a short um timeline but but it was it was a useful experience anyway because I had to be resourceful in that situation because I didn't have those um support options to me so I had to sort of be resourceful and figure my way around things and and at the end of the day like we said before you know it was a very short scheme so I could just try things out and and there wasn't too much pressure to get it like exactly right the first time. I just think there's, there's a real uh, difference here in so much as Kevin had a career and then he's using a scheme to diversify his career and uh, Ellen used a scheme to uh, like springboard her career. So um, Ellen, what did you, I'm, I'm curious, what did it lead to? I mean, I gained so much from it. I, I, I know we've used the springboard, springboard word quite a lot, but it, it, it was virtually that for me. It was the way, it was my, it was my way in and my way on to, but you know, more things. So um, as part of Change 100, you have mentoring as well. So you have someone who's um, within the same organization, but not like part of your direct team that you're working with. And they're assigned to be your mentor. Um, and they mentor you for um, six months. 
and you kind of meet up with them every now and again and, and talk about your future ambitions and they help you with networking and things like that. So that was so, so valuable. Um, I also, there was a, there was about a hundred of us, is, is in the name, but <laughs> there was about a hundred of us all doing internships all over the country. Um, so I gained a really valuable network of other people doing placements at Film, people I wouldn't have met necessarily before from, you know, different parts of the country and different unis and all kinds of things. Um, but the main thing it gave me was the experience um, and the insight into what it's like to, to work, to have a paid role, to, to work in a big organisation like that, um, to have to advocate for myself and my needs with, with employers that didn't know much about disability before. Um, so it was, the onus was really on me to kind of you know, advocate for myself with them. And that was really, really positive experience. What I've learned over the years is you can't know too many people, you know, so to be building up a network of other people is really fabulous. I'm just, I'm just conscious of time. So I'm going to go to, to Kevin, just in respect of, um, I know you're only two months in, but game, yeah. what, what's it giving you? What might it lead to? So it, it's that practical experience. I'm, I'm working on the world service at the moment uh, on an arts program. So, you know, straight away, I'm kind of researching uh, the programs. I'm, I'm working on a program about the Colombian elections. So I'm actually going out there trying to find contributors. Um, I'm actually working on scripts for programs and uh, it hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure that the time will come soon. And it's happened to some of my fellow trainees where, you know, you write your script and it's actually being written out on air. So that's, that's a very, very kind of exciting prospect. And also like the network is really, really amazing. You know, at the BBC, I've now got this global, uh, you know, address book of all these amazing people. And one of the things that we've been told as trainees is get in touch with people, uh, you know, send an email and say, hello, I'm a trainee. C can we have a coffee and all this stuff? And that's something I'm definitely going to be doing as we come out of COVID, because there's so many of my heroes that I want to try and reach out to. And you can talk to your manager as well about going to observe programs and, and volunteer for programs and stuff that you really like. You know, so I'm a big, I'm a musician. I want to go and see people playing in Radio 3 and seeing what, what amazing musicians come through. So I'm trying to arrange that at the moment. So, that it, you know, I think that's really key. Networking um, and just putting yourself forward and volunteering as much as possible. Yeah, I think so too. And I think one of the things that actually it is harder if you're blind or partially sighted as a young person setting out in the world of work is, is getting work experience. Because when I was sighted in your age, you know, I could get work in a bar, in a restaurant, and that wasn't what I wanted to do as a career, but it was giving me that experience. It was giving me something to talk about. It was giving me an idea about what the world of work felt like. Um, and I'm not saying it's not possible to get a part-time job or to get any work experience, but it is harder um, if you're blind or partially sighted. And so actually sometimes that can be a disadvantage. So doing a scheme, something like this can give you that work experience and it's much more credible, uh, much more exciting work experience than a bar job anyway. Um, but it just enables you to have something to put on your CV, to talk about, it can help your confidence, it can understand the dynamics of work and um, which can be daunting when, you've not, when you're just starting out or diversifying your career. Um, so I'm just going to put one more call out. Has anybody got a final, any final uh, questions? Yes, there are a couple of more questions that have come through. Uh, one Thank from you. Lacey, do you have to be under a particular age for Change 100, which Ellen has kindly answered in the chat, saying, I don't believe there is a, uh, an age limit. There is also a question for, where do you actually go to find apprenticeship or placement schemes? Where do you look? Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm going to jump in there in so much as to say that we are going to provide a starting point for you. So some that exist that we know about, we'll share with you um, after today. Um, and, but I will just share one quick experience that I've had. So I'm not currently looking for one. And yet things are coming in my Twitter feed, you know. So, you know, who are you following on Twitter? Who are you following, you know, who are you friends with on Facebook and so on? Um, because something's just coming to my Twitter feed about Thomas Pocklington Trust have got some live uh, placements now that are, the deadline hasn't been and gone. Um, there's a few in different parts of the country. Um, so, yeah, it's just that thing about being really mindful about who you're following, where are you looking, what are you Googling? And that's where your network can come in. Who do you know who might know? So put lots of feelers out there and, and, and ask a lot. And when we put our thing together, um, there'll be a few on there that can get you started. 